On today's episode, we're answering the question, no, we're not because I'm on the wrong damn outline. I think this stuff is really important because you want to make them feel like you're on their team. I'm on your side. I want you to succeed. Frankly, I have clients that they love me because I am genuinely vested in their success. I want to see them succeed. I celebrate with them. They're excited to tell me about stuff that they do because I celebrate with them. I tell them how proud of them I am. I tell them this is so exciting. Like, really? That's it's it. It's not that hard. It's not that hard to just be excited for someone. And let's be honest and frank and transparent here. It is a nice old ego boost when somebody says, hey, Allison, that thing you said worked like gangbusters. Thank you. Here's the results I got. So yeah, little ego boost, pat myself on the back, but also awesome. I'm so excited that you sold out your program or you got a bunch of registrants for your webinar or whatever it is that they did with the information that I give them. Okay. So a few steps to kind of create this experience for them. And step number one is find out what they need. And I don't mean like what they need to do to solve their problem, but how do they like to communicate? How often do they want to hear from you? What do they want you to text them or email them? And obviously, the, the more they pay, the more personal you're going to get, right? That's just the way it's scalable. It's, I, I'm not able to be so super personal with every single person on my email list. But that doesn't mean that I can't acknowledge their comments in a Facebook group. If that's where they're posting, that's where they want to communicate with me. Also, what are their expectations from what they've purchased, right? Find out what they need to fulfill those expectations. Allison brings up a really good point with the expectations and the understanding of what people need. Your next job is to deliver it. Once you know what they want, just, just provide it for them. It's actually a lot easier than people think. We have these lovely things called automations in our email marketing systems that can help us do that, at, make it a lot easier, quite honestly. So give it to them. What can you build into your programs or your processes that meet the needs that your ideal client or your purchaser has expressed to you? How can you make sure they're connecting or you're connecting with them on a level that they want? And this is where customer service, if you've ever worked a customer service job, and, and I have, and I know Allison has too, this is where that customer service comes in. Just go a little bit above and beyond. And do the surprise and delight. I love surprise and delight. And it's not a hard thing to do. Allison does this, like she was mentioning a little bit earlier, but Allison actually doesn't really tell you all that she does. And she's not giving herself enough credit when she says that she gives, you know, she kind of, Allison's the cheerleader behind the scenes and she will give a lot of love onto her clients when something really good happens for them. And she'll push them to succeed. And when they do, she absolutely provides a lot of support and I try and do the same as well, but it's very, very important. And you can build it in, into your automations as well, right? So you can, you can look at these different ways of creating that customer service experience that really makes people feel like I was saying earlier, seen and heard. One of the things that I got to do, I just I mentioned my summit a little earlier. Um, I had VIP and I had VIP buyers and on day one of the summit, they got their VIP stuff. They got the transcripts and the, the notes and access to the recordings early. And then I think it was probably the night of day one, I realized, oh, I forgot to give them the bonus <laughs> that I promised them. So on day two, I said, hey, welcome. It's day two. Wanted to make sure that you also got this and that it didn't get missed in yesterday's flurry of emails, you know if you're a VIP buyer from the summit, that's why you got day two um, gifts. But, and then I was like, well, I have a third day of the summit and I'm kind of liking the whole gift thing. So I came up with another, I called it an unadvertised bonus. And I just emailed it to him. It was a free, it was a thing I already had. I knew it had a ton of value, but it was just another little, thing to surprise them. And I think even I put a GIF at the top of the email that was just somebody jumping out of a box that said surprise. Like surprise and delight is not that hard. 
it can be little. It doesn't have to be this big orchestrated flash mob proposal. It can be very simple. Hey, I have this. I thought you might like it. All right. So step three is to audit the results. Are you getting the results? Are your people getting the results that you promised? Can you better support them through the process or transformation that you've sold to them? Do you need to manage the expectations of what that result may be? Is your content or process or service lacking or abundant in helping with this? What needs to happen? You need to do this often. I want you to have a finger on this pulse, whether you're selling courses, products, services, group coaching, I don't care. Are your people getting what you promised? Because I guarantee you, if they're not, they're not going to buy from you again. All right, do this quarterly and make adjustments as needed. But really, you should kind of know, right? Oh yeah, the majority of my people are super successful. I have, you know, these one or two people in my group coaching, they're probably lagging behind. Frankly, they can't, they're not showing up to the calls, All right? You should know who's getting results, especially at high levels and who's not. And if not, you know, what needs to be done? If it's if it's a product, how can you support them through consuming that content? Can you build in quizzes? Can you get feedback? Can you ask for testimonials? Um, what can you do to just check in on those results? Yeah, I'm a huge fan of what Allison just said. I really love trying to get those results. For an example, if you're running a course and you're using a software like Thinkific as an example, any really good course art, uh, softwares will have this built in where you can run a little quiz at the end of a module and get some feedback or at the end of the actual course. So I think that's a phenomenal idea. So we have a couple takeaways from today and there's a few that we think are really important. Number one is make sure you do that one through 10 list that Allison was talking about at the beginning where you sort of list out the sort of the journey of your ideal client, that buyer's journey, and then try and determine where you are on that list, what you could offer, and also what you want to do, how you want to serve on that list. What numbers do you actually want to do? And make sure you focus on that and ensure that you have ways for people to become those repeat buyers. I want you to put your customer service hat on. I want you to make sure that their experience is so good that they want to come back. They want more from you. The end goal here is they say to you, well, we're going to use Allison because that's my name. They're going to say, Allison, I don't want to leave yet. How can I stay? That is the ultimate goal. How can I stay with you? If what you else can, can I get buy? That, yeah, if you can get that, man, you got it. <laughs> I want to use the picture of Allison. If you can't, you, um, if you're just listening to this, I'm seeing Allison and she's doing like the sort of like the circle thumb thing. I, I love that. It's so cute. I want you to understand your buyer's expectations and make sure that you deliver them. So what's the expectation that you think that they want? Don't assume, find out. It's not as hard as it might seem. You can ask some questions. You can build this into your structure where you're just asking people prior to like what you know, what's your favorite way of receiving information? How often do you need to be heard, et cetera, et cetera. I love that. And make sure that you understand them and so you can deliver the right thing to them. How can you continue to improve their experience, to improve their results, to improve what you're doing? All right, here's the thing. If we're not growing, we're dead. I hate to say it that way. If we're not growing, we're dead. And I don't mean money-wise. I don't mean money-wise. I mean... If things don't continually improve, your competition will catch up to you. You'll get stagnant and people will be less excited about working with you. So how can you be better tomorrow than you were today? 
with everything that you do? Hold on. No. <laughs> because, okay, so here's the thing. So apparently I start every episode with, okay, so. But Jenny called me out on it. Oh, and no, now, now it's awkward. <laughs> now I don't want to do it, but it screws me up because I don't know how to get into the flow without my okay, so. Oh, 